Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our talks on thyroid. Here we're going to talk about thyroid nodules and cancer. Now, this is kind of the culmination of our thyroid talks. And so if you haven't watched my other thyroid videos, I strongly suggest that you do that because I'm going to uh, assume that you have some understanding of how thyroid hormones and TSH works, as well as how the RAIU scan works and stuff like that. So please go back and watch those videos if you haven't already, um, because we're really building off of that here. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And if you haven't, definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel. You'll get links, um, or I'm sorry, you'll get updates and notifications as I put more videos up, which I try to do roughly every weekday. All right, so what is a thyroid nodule? It's a neoplasm, okay? That's all it is, a neoplasm. And it could be, uh, it's typically benign. Often they're subclinical, so you will see a patient come in and you feel their thyroid and you feel a little bump, okay? That's a thyroid nodule. Now, sometimes they will be symptomatic. You've got patients coming in with hyperthyroid symptoms and you feel their thyroid, and rather than feeling a goiter, you feel a nodule, Okay, so what do we do if we have a thyroid nodule? The best first step is a TSH level. Why? Because thyroid nodules can either be functioning, meaning they make thyroid hormone, and typically those will cause symptoms, or they can be non-functional, meaning that you have a thyroid nodule, but it's not doing anything. So the best first step is a TSH level, and the reason is because that will tell us whether the thyroid is function or the thyroid nodule is functioning. Um, so naturally, if you're making T3 and T4, that's going to suppress the TSH. And so if we have a low TSH, what that's telling us is that the thyroid nodule is functioning. Our next step then is going to be an RAIU scan, which remember will localize the nodule and it'll tell us definitively if the nodule is functioning. We'll take a look at some RAIU scans, but I go over those uh, in a little bit more detail in the hyperthyroid talk and in the thyroiditis talk. Now, if the TSH is normal, then what that's telling us is that this thyroid nodule is probably not functioning. And so when you have a thyroid nodule that is not functioning, it is much more likely to be cancerous than if it is functioning. Um, so our next step after that, if we have a nodule with a normal TSH level, is going to be a fine needle aspiration under ultrasound guidance. And this will tell us definitively if we're dealing with cancer. And it'll tell us also what type of cancer. And we'll see that there are four major types of thyroid cancer. Um, so this is basically what I just talked about. And... Um, Keep in mind that all non-functioning nodules are assumed to be thyroid cancer until proven otherwise, and that's why we do the FNA. Very important. Now, this is the RAIU scan. All right. Often, we're not going to do this if we have a, a likely cancerous no nodule because um, if you have a normal TSH, then you can be rest assured that you're dealing with a, a non-functioning nodule and we just proceed to FNA. So what you're going to see on RAIU scan is kind of a silhouette of the thyroid where you see our two lobes of the thyroid here and then we see the isthmus roughly right there. Now if you see an area of increased uptake of that radioiodine, um, then you'll see this kind of darker area, and this corresponds to an adenoma. So you see that again here. All right, now what happens if we have a cold nodule? What does that look like? Well, you're going to see an area of decreased uptake. So rather than seeing that nice, beautiful silhouette of the thyroid, like we see kind of here and here, and then we see the isthmus, you're going to see these areas of increased uptake, perhaps, uh, but what you may see and what you will see if you see a cold nodule is areas of decreased uptake. So that's right here, 
Okay, so notice that you've got this nice silhouette and then this area where there's no uptake. That's a cold nodule. Now you also see it here. Um, so here you've got normal uptake, normal uptake, and then this area here where you have no uptake. And this is showing us again that you have a cold nodule. Um, all right, so this is kind of what I just talked about here. And um, uh, remember, we get the TSH. If they're euthyroid, we get the FNA. Now, we can also get the RAIU scan if they're thyrotoxic, if they have a low TSH level. Um, and if that does indeed show us a cold nodule, which would be unusual, then again, we go after FNA. Um, now, there are a few ways that the FNA can show up. It can be benign, and if it's benign, we'll repeat the FNA in 6 to 12 months. If it's malignant, then as we're going to see, we need to surgically remove um, the thyroid, either a total thyroidectomy or a partial thyroidectomy. Now, this here, if it's suspicious, if we don't know based on the FNA results, um, then we can go about this in one of two ways. Um, but we, what we typically do is we get a frozen section um, and then determine whether it's benign or malignant. I wouldn't worry so much about this because you're typically on any exam going to be told it's either malignant or benign, and you'll need to know how to manage that. Now, what about thyroid cancer? Well, thyroid cancer is the most common endocrine cancer. Uh, it is fairly common. Um, now, there are four types, which you should remember if you've taken step one. Um, this is a classic uh, histology question because histology is important and uh, pathology is important for step one. And often you'll be shown either papillary, follicular, or medullary, and you have to know what that looks like on slides. Now, when you're talking about step two and step three, you don't need to know what this looks like under the microscope, but you do need to know the differences between the three, and we'll go into them. Papillary thyroid cancer, remember the orphan antinuclei, uh, that is the most common uh, type of thyroid cancer. Uh, and then it's followed by follicular and then medullary and anaplastic. Different sources will say these may be number three or number four, uh, but the sources that I've seen most recently say that medullary is number three and anaplastic is number four. Now, what are the risk factors for thyroid cancer? History of head and neck radiation in childhood is perhaps the number one risk factor. And so we saw an outbreak of thyroid cancer uh, in Japan after the nuclear bombing. If you've ever read the book Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes, you got to see that. I believe she died of leukemia, but there were a lot of cancers that were happening in Japan in the 1940s and 1950s because there were children that were exposed to that ionizing radiation from the bomb. Exposure to ionizing radiation from nuclear radiation is a huge risk factor, but it's just not as common. Um, you know, we don't have nuclear bomb attacks. Chernobyl was a nuclear meltdown. You know, there was probably some exposure there, Fukushima, um, but that's a little less common. Uh, well, why would you get head and neck radiation in childhood? Well, if you get a uh, lymphoma, for instance, you may need to have exposure to radiation in order to treat that. And so there is a long-term risk. Hereditary conditions. The big one here is men type 2, multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2. And uh, that is um, going to be particularly associated with medullary thyroid cancer. Now, another place where you can see medullary thyroid cancer is if you have a per person with men type 2 who does not know and they're put on one of those GLP-1 medications for, uh, for type 2 diabetes. Remember, those are like uh, liraglutide and stuff like that. And that's why they um, are always telling us do not put a patient on that if they've got men type 2. And then there are a few other uh, risk factors. All right, so the cornerstone of management for thyroid cancer is indeed thyroidectomy with cervical lymph node dissection. The recommendations are constantly changing, but these are the recommendations right now. We will do a total thyroidectomy if the cancer, uh, if the uh, the tumor itself uh, is more than four centimeters, and we can go ahead and do a hemithyroidectomy if it is smaller. Now, the benefit of doing a hemithyroidectomy is that we will not have to replace a thyroid hormone. 
if we do a total thyroidectomy, then unfortunately we will, will have to put the patient on levothyroxine for life. Now, another thing um, that's beneficial to doing a hemithyroidectomy is that um, we can uh, avoid the possibility of removing the parathyroid glands. Um, and if we do remove the parathyroid glands, which is accidental, but it is common, um, then we have to also supplement the patient with parathyroid hormone. So we can avoid that. Okay, uh, so papillary thyroid cancer is the most common type of thyroid cancer, and it spreads lymphatically. It does have a very good prognosis, and one of the things that you're going to need to know are some of the tumor markers. So the tumor marker for both papillary and, as we'll see, follicular thyroid cancer is thyroglobulin, and the reason is because papillary and follicular cells surround the uh, areas that uh, hold and create uh, thyroglobulin and thyroid hormone. Remember that thyroid globulin holds the precursor for thyroid hormone. Remember the uh, monoiodothyronine and the diiodothyronine, which then come together to make T3 or T4. Um, that's the thyroglobulin. Follicular thyroid carcinoma also uh, arises from thyroid follicles. Um, it occurs a little bit more often in the elderly. It can spread hematogenously, and it also is associated with thyroglobulin. Medullary thyroid cancer is a little bit different. This comes from parafollicular cells, which are also called C cells, and C cells make calcitonin. And so the, uh, the tumor marker for medullary thyroid cancer is calcitonin, and you can also see serotonin as a tumor marker. Now, medullary thyroid cancer is the one that we see in patients with men type 2. You also have an increased risk for medullary thyroid cancer if you're on one of those diabetes medications like liraglutide and semaglutide. And those medications have actually been uh, or are getting FDA approved for weight loss. And you're going to see a lot of patients that are going to be on those medications. And one of the concerns is that it's going to raise the risk of thyroid cancer. Now, anaplastic thyroid cancer arises from giant cells. It, unlike the other three, can be painful, and it tends to have a very poor prognosis with a median survival of about three to six months. Now, with the treatment, pretty much all of these are going to be a thyroidectomy, um, but with anaplastic cancer, in many cases, they're non-resectable, and so we just go to palliative care. Now, with all of these thyroid cancers, there is a role for radioactive iodine ablation as well as chemotherapy and possibly radiation. However, for your exam, you will not need to know when we do that. That's outside the scope of all steps of the USMLE. Okay, so let's briefly recap what we went over. Um, so if you appreciate a thyroid nodule on physical exam, your first step is to do a TSH. If the TSH is low, then what that suggests is that you're dealing with a functioning thyroid nodule or an adenoma. And so we're going to do an RAIU scan. And if it is indeed functioning, it'll show up hot and we will treat that as a thyroid adenoma. If it is cold, then we will proceed to FNA with ultrasound guidance. Or if you have a normal TSH, that pretty much, much tells us that we're not making thyroid hormone from that nodule, and so we just go straight on to FNA with ultrasound guidance. FNA is the most accurate test for the diagnosis of thyroid cancer. If we're benign, then we just repeat in six months to a year. If it is malignant, then we're going to have to do a thyroidectomy. Now, thyroid cancer, the biggest risk factors are ionizing radiation and the hereditary cancer syndromes, primarily men type 2. And the cornerstone of management for thyroid cancer is thyroidectomy, whether that's a hemithyroidectomy or a full thyroidectomy, total thyroidectomy, uh, just depends on primarily the size. Um, and then we also do a cervical lymph node dissection. You'll want to know your tumor markers. If you have a papillary or follicular thyroid cancer, the tumor marker is thyroglobulin. And if you're dealing with a medullary thyroid cancer, the tumor marker is calcitonin and serotonin because that's made by parafollicular C cells, which is the precursor to the medullary thyroid cancers.